the previous videos I went through how to set up and operate a pick and place machine and I went over it in fairly brief um, summary, I didn't go into a lot of detail. And some people have been asking how they can go about um, applying solder paste and then how does that um, fit within the operation of the machine. So in other words, how does the entire process work and could I give a demonstration? Now normally I have a machine that I would use for doing this. I do a lot of this sort of work so I don't normally do it in a manual form like this. And as most people don't have the machines, uh, I thought the best solution would be to show the easiest and simplest manual approach to doing this. So I have a number of these boards to run and so I thought I would just uh, take the time to demonstrate the process that you can use. This isn't the way I normally do this, um, but it's uh, a free way, if you like, of, um, of getting um, a pick and place board processed, provided you have the basic machines, of course. So I'm going to process uh, this particular board and we'll go through the entire sequence. So the first thing I want to do is take off the uh, guides. You'll notice on this particular board I had the manufacturer put uh, fiducials onto the uh, actual uh, surround on the board. Uh, I use that in the automated machine that I have, uh, but I don't need it for the manual process. I'm going to remove these uh, side strips to start with. So these are scored boards, so it's just really a case of just breaking off these side pieces. Uh, but don't throw them away, you'll need those. So if you don't have any of these to break off, you do need something the same thickness of, as the board, either use another board, uh, but as I say, if you do have these, then these are, are quite useful. So once you've done this, uh, make sure you know which way around this uh, board is sitting. Um, and then give it a bit of a clean, just to get all the uh, grease and dirt off it. So just a bit of uh, IPA. And this is just to make sure that um, there are no contaminants on the board. You know, after all, trying to solder small components to a board and it doesn't need to be clean. Okay, and the next thing, we need to stop the board moving around. And the easiest way is just a bit of uh, paint tape. Uh, make sure that you don't stick it over a part that you need to uh, put paste onto. So in, in this case we're not going to have paste in the holes down the side so I can put the tape down the edge of the board. And that will stop the board moving around when we're trying to apply uh, paste. These just need placing around the board and they're there to support the stencil that we need to use to apply the paste. So when you order the board, most manufacturers will also supply a stencil like this. And obviously it is specific to each particular layout. So this is um, for this particular palletized layout of this board. And what you need to do now is, as they have the supports around the board, and what they do is they stop the um, stencil from bowing. And if it bows up in the middle, you'll find that when you uh, put the paste on, it will go through the holes and spread out underneath the stencil, which is what you don't want. When you put in the paste on, the stencil just has just have to be uh, pressed fairly firmly against the board to make sure that the paste stays within the confines of the uh, edge holes within the stencil itself. So the next thing is to line it up with the board and you'll be able to see through the holes. And what you're looking for is when all the holes line up so that you get the exact pattern uh, showing through with no emissions. So in other words, once you get it in the right place, it becomes fairly uh, obvious that it's in the right place. So you can see that in that position, then every hole has uh, something underneath it. There is no, there are no dark um, areas. And you do need to get it fairly carefully aligned. And so once it's in the right place, the next thing is to tape this down to the backboard as well so it doesn't move around. And again, a bit of tape. So make sure it's in exactly the right place. So I'm having to work around the camera here, but uh, hopefully you get the idea. And then another piece at the other end.
and then a final check to make sure that all the holes are lined up with the pads on the board. Next thing is the solder paste. Don't keep solder paste too long, it does have a shelf life. If it starts going stiff or uh, looking a bit powdery, then you need to throw it away. So we'll get the protective cap off and always put the protection back on once, of, once you've finished using it, otherwise it will dry out very quickly. Give it a bit of a mix. All the flux will tend to uh, float to the top because obviously the solder um, itself is quite heavy, so it sinks to the bottom and all the flux will move to the top and if you don't uh, mix it up you end up with um, either very wet paste uh, with uh, too little well, too much flux and too little paste in it um, or the rest of the solder will dry out too quickly okay so once it's been mixed I've mixed this earlier so I don't need to go too much but make sure it is properly mixed uh, and then you just need to get some You don't need too much and then hold the stencil down to the board and what you're trying to do is press it down so you're pushing down onto the stencil and you don't want it lifting up as I say if it lifts up you'll tend to get a uh, paste going underneath and it will spread out and um, you won't get a proper uh, processing of the board And then once you've got the entire board area covered, don't get mad and try and scrape all this off um, at this point. So we'll get the spatula cleaned off. And get the paste covered back up as quickly as you can. You do need to keep paste somewhere fairly cool, so the fridge is the best place if no one in the house objects to it too much. Okay, so the paste is now applied to the board. The next step is to get the stencil lifted off the board without moving it around. You don't want to slide it around, otherwise you'll just spread the paste out. So again, hold the stencil down fairly firmly. Take the first piece of tape off. And then while holding the stencil down so it can't move, you need to support it somewhere in the centre and then just start kind of peeling it back. You want to kind of roll it off straight upwards and then fold it back over the piece of tape you had at the rear. Have a quick uh, inspection, that looks fine. And then we need to get this piece of tape off the edge. So as you can see the solder paste is now properly applied to all the pads on the board. This board is now ready to go into the pick and place machine. So we'll get down to the pick and place machine, run the um, job for this particular board and then we can bring it back and put it into the reflow oven. Okay we're at the pick and place machine. I have all the carousels loaded with the correct components. I've got the machine aligned and what we'll do now is place the board into the machine. I'm actually doubling up the boards. These are 0.8mm thick boards and because I have the machine set up for nominal 1.6mm boards and I'm too lazy to keep adjusting the height of the machine, what I do for thinner boards like this is I double them up. I put a, um, a sacrificial blank board underneath and that brings the uh, total board height up to the nominal adjustment for this machine. So we'll get the board Make sure we put it in the right way round, of course. Avoid touching the solder paste. A 
and then make sure we have it pushed all the way up to the uh, origin position and also that it's not canted over in any particular direction it's very important that it is properly aligned and also that it's not going to move during the process okay so what I'll do now is calibrate this board I won't move the camera to the screen I've shown that before uh, but all I'm going to do is drive the machine to three predefined positions on the board and then I'll tell the software exactly what adjustment it needs to properly align it with this particular pallet and I do this even though these are all uh, the same pallet I'm running today I will do this for every single uh, job that I run through just to make sure that there are no um, variations in the pallet it does need to be fairly precise so we'll go to the first one <laughs> Uh, what I'm doing is on the screen of the PC I'm just adjusting using the camera there's a, a camera looking down on the head and it's looking down at the board and I'm aligning it to a particular position on the board that's the first one and we'll go to the second one and then finally we'll go to the third one and by using three it adjusts for uh, any discrepancies in the size of the board but also if the board's not uh, perfectly square within the machine okay so that's um, the board calibrated and what I'll do now is run the pick and place job and hopefully all the components will be properly placed onto the board and I'll fast forward through this part but I will let you see the entire process Thank <laughs> you. 
OK, so that's the job done. Looking at the job statistics, it took uh, just on 14 minutes, uh, just under 500 components, and a average placement speed of around 2,000 components per hour. So what we can do now is remove the board from the machine, and then get this up and put this into the reflow oven, get it reflowed, and then we can look at it under a microscope and make sure the process has worked. OK, so now it's time to put the board through the reflow oven. I have checked under a microscope and all the components are properly placed and um, all the solder paste appears to be uh, correctly um, partially adhered to the components. So this now goes into the reflow oven. If you saw my series on modifying the reflow oven, then this is the particular oven that I've modified. I did go a bit further than I showed in the videos and I ended up uh, testing a few other things including fitting a motor that uh, moved the bed back and forth uh, by half the spacing of the heaters and that was to simulate a conveyor system. It did improve things very slightly but not enough to warrant the uh, complexity uh, of including the system. So the modifications I ended up with on this are just the circulation fan and a couple of baffles and a slight modification in the way that the uh, main cooling fan at the back blows air into the chamber. There's a baffle uh, that stops the air blowing directly onto the board. Uh, and I've also restricted the outlet and I fitted a uh, mechanical seal on the drawer and all that does make a huge difference and um, the temperature spread in the chamber is now only two or three degrees uh, and also it does adhere directly to the control profile which we'll see in a few minutes. Uh, so next thing is to get the board fitted into the drawer. I've got it sitting on top of some upturned ICs and this just uh, enables me to keep the board away from the metalwork of the drawer and it gives a much more uh, even temperature profile. So close up the drawer. I've got my profile selected, so I'll get it running. I'll fast forward through this bit. It uh, takes about seven minutes, but uh, I'll let you see the uh, way the profile develops. And you'll see that unlike a standard uh, machine, um, if you get a, a standard T962A, then you'll find that if you watch the profile as the run proceeds then the temperatures are all over the place. Uh, you notice on this one with the modifications that the temperature profile exactly follows the programmed um, temperature profile and that does mean that uh, you can program this to give the actual temperature that you want rather than trying to come up with some compromise that will allow the board to work. Okay so we'll start this running As I say, it takes about six or seven minutes, and um, I'll fast forward through this and get back at the end.
Okay, so the run's finished. As you can see, with the modifications, the temperature tracks very close to what's actually set, follows the exact uh, path that's been um, predefined, and that gives very good repeatable results. I'll just stop the machine, and we'll get the board out, get it under the microscope, and uh, see how it looks. Okay, I've examined the board under the microscope, and it looks fine. All the um, solder connections are nicely flowed. All the components are properly placed and centered. And um, one thing when you're dealing with uh, pick and place, you might notice when you finish the pick and place part of the process that not all the components are properly aligned. They might be off very slightly. But as long as all the leads of the components are somewhere within the pad they're supposed to be sitting in, then in theory at least, when you flow the paste, it should pull the components into the correct location. Um, so that's what you're aiming for. You want all the components to be properly soldered to the board. Make sure all the um, paste has properly flowed and it's, it should be fairly shiny. I don't know if you can see it on camera, but the um, solder connections are all fairly bright. Uh, if you look at the, uh, the, the curve where the solder paste comes up against the component leads, it's nice and shiny and that's how it should look if it's dull or sort of dark grey then it probably hasn't flowed properly so this is what you're looking for uh, of course you don't want to go too hot that could damage the components um, but that's a successful um, board I've just got to do 10 more of these and um, hopefully they'll turn out the same